Hello, my name is Will. I'm the host of The Bald Book Geek. How are all of you? Before we get going, please like, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon somewhere, because alerts. And I apologise if my voice sounds really crappy. I have hay fever from hell. Pollen is trying to kill me. So I'm going to talk about Always a Witch, which is this great Netflix show from uh, Colombia that's dubbed into English. It's based on a novel called I Witch, which is only available in Spanish at the moment. I've read the book. Being bilingual is quite useful. Uh, great book. It's different to the show, but the basic premise and the characters are all there. So it's an interesting take on it. But I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the show. So Always a Witch follows a young woman who falls in love, a young slave, who falls in love with the slave owner's son, or the, her owner, basically. And it, th th I will give criticism here that the show, the timeline of this is really quick. I do wish there was a bit more time and build up to this, but it did feel kind of insta-lovey. But once you understand it, because she's obviously young, she's quite naive, and it shows, and that's a good thing. This show is brilliantly written. It's fast. It's interesting. It has its dark moments, but it has its funny moments. And the whole storyline is that she ends up <clears throat> being burnt at the stake because she is a witch. But she gets given a spell by a wizard who is an important character that will allow her to go to a time when no one believes mm. in witches. And she ends up in contemporary Colombia. And you have her story and a you have this great story that is her. She wants to go back. She wants to be with a man she loves, but she's pulled. I, I won't go again, trying not to be spoilery here. But you have this show that's got this really strong female cast and really strong male cast as well. What I find hilarious is a few people have criticised the notion of it, but it's probably a story that played out more than we think. Like, if you look into your actual family histories, you'll be quite surprised what turns up. Yeah, mine is prime example of that. I, I think it's a story that's played out a few times in history. It's just this is facing it head on. She's she's definitely a really strong character. I love the main character in this. She is this strong. She's naive. She because she's now she, you know she doesn't know the world that we're in. She doesn't know the modern world. So there is a naivety to her, and she's not scared of it, and she's not scared to be vulnerable. She is a really well written and fully formed character, and the characters around her are. There is a couple of character. One character has to get kind of written out quite early. Which is a shame, but there was because he had to move on to another project. It, it was more to do with acting commitments than the actual script writers. But it is a genuinely interesting show. Great soundtrack too. So let's go into this on Netflix. The thing that is really annoying, and this is being really honest. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to be honest. Is the overdubbing is strange. I'd rather watch it in Spanish, but I know my Spanish is European and that Spanish is Colombian. And there's a whole, that's different. And I've already picked up on quite major differences. It's like Parisian French, Canadian French, that there, there is differences there. So I, w I would have problems, understand. I would have issues here and there. You know, what? I'd if I had to, I'd rather watch it with subtitles than the dub over. I find the overdub a little strange. It's not bad at all, but sometimes it feels like Google Translate rather than a fault out overdub. It feels like someone's just basically translated the script without taking, without directly rather than adding some subtleties. I can deal with that. I, I've dealt with worse overdubbing <laughs> in my life. But yeah, I mean, this is a really strong, great show with a great cast. The acting is good and it's nice to see. I was surprised by that. I, w I don't know what I was expecting. I just watched it on a whim and I couldn't stop watching it. So it is a genuinely interesting show. Visually, it's nice. The styling is nice. It's eye candy. And it is a bit fluffy. I will say that. It is a little fluffy. And some of it is a little bit sickly sweet. But it also has quite a dark tone in places. And it deals with, with her reality of what's gone on. And, you know, it's just... I, I sat down and I binged the whole thing twice. I've watched through both seasons twice that are on Netflix in the UK. And I've been blown away by it. And I think you guys need to watch it. I think you'd enjoy it as well. And it does open some interesting questions, like a lot of like um, South American mythology, a bit of Catholicism, a little voodoo, and other and earth religions all kind of compile into the mythology of Colombia. 
that's grown up since um, Spaniards. And that's what this is more, that's what interests me with this. Like it dips into that mythology and the, that little bit of history there that sometimes is kind of ignored. Like South America is, I mean, I've been to, um, I've been to parts of South America, but I've never been to Colombia and I do want to go at some point. But you also have, um, the, I mean, a few people have criticized its portrayal of slavery and I, why I do agree, and I'll give this criticism, that the timeline of events are very fast from her falling in love and, you know, it, that insta-love thing is annoying. But the story of a girl falling in love with her slave owner has, or boy falling in love with the slave mistress, has been quite interesting. I've done the research into that has been amazing. Like, wow, that happened a lot. And probably explains a few people's heritage, including my own, which is kind of scary. But overall, I, I would rate this a solid uh, three and a half out of five, which is a good show. Uh, if you want something that's a little bit different, a little quirky, do check out Always a Witch. As always, my name is Will. I host the Board Book Geek, and I'll talk to you guys later.